Okay, here we go, episode eight. And a few, it's not going to be a long one, um, but it's going to be good. We're, we're going back to the ABR1 again because the uh, comparison test I did before, the it suddenly kind of occurred to me that I'm comparing a, a brand new condition uh, replica ABR1 to a really beat up old ABR1. And uh, so the new one, all the saddles are precision cut. The old one, the saddles are like deep, they're V-shaped, they're in the wrong place. And uh, I started thinking, well, this has got to be affecting the sound, making the old one sound darker because it's just really poorly um, crafted over the years. It has extra notches in it and blah, blah, blah. So I decided, well, I've, I've got this brand new Mint ABR1. It's never been notched. It's never even been on a guitar. So I have saddles for the replica that aren't notched. So if I put those on that bridge and then compare that to the old one that's not notched either, that would be a lot fair, more fair comparison. So that's what I did. And, uh, it was it was a good thing to try, as you'll see. Um, let's see. I, on 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 my uh, comments settings on on the A, uh, not the ABR one on YouTube. Um, I have it set to to for me to approve every single comment, but. I kept noticing that I would approve them and then they would just vanish. They wouldn't be published. So I'm going to set it to all comments approved and then just remove the trolls and, you know, people trying to cause trouble and stuff. There's actually hardly been any of that, but let's see if that works any better. Um, my website. I still get emails from my website and quite frankly that website has kind of been abandoned. It's just, it's so far out of date that it's almost impossible to conceive of finding enough time to re practically rebuild it from scratch. I just don't have that kind of time. so. What I need to do is put a notice on it or something that says, you know, this this is out out of date. It's not updated, and please go to YouTube to see what I'm doing lately. So, okay, I got that. Um, demo, da, 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 da. That's all pretty quick stuff. Um, also, in this episode. I'm going to kind of introduce you to who I am, where I came from. Um, people just think I, all I ever did was make pickups, and that's not true. I actually have a, at least 25 years uh, in the music industry as a graphic designer, art director, creative director, you know, a one-man show, basically. But I, I was trained in school and I worked in some pretty big shot uh, ad agencies, learned my craft, won a lot of awards, have been published in some uh, design annuals, etc. But, you know, I had a couple paying jobs and I got really bored with working on the same accounts and doing the same stuff every day. It just wasn't really fulfilling. So I eventually became my own business, got my own clients, 
and you know learned a bunch of skills like photography, um, photo, airbrush retouching, and back to my roots of originally wanting to be a cartoonist when I was a kid, but as I was getting into my uh, late teens and <clears throat> early 20s, it, 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 the whole cartooning field was in the newspapers. It, it was just, it was dying out. They kept shrinking the cartoons so you could, you could hardly read them anymore. And it was just a dead field. So, uh, a cartoonist at the Miami Herald uh, printed some of my cartoons and recommended I get into commercial art. Nowadays it's called graphic design. So I evolved from there and then being uh, guitar crazy I ended in living in the right place in the Bay Area. I migrated into servicing music industry accounts. And uh, EMG and Shrapnel Records were my two big guys, bread and butter. So I'm going to go into that a little bit, show you some stuff. And at one point, I tried to get out of graphic design, um, doing uh, metal art smithing, silver smithing, gold smithing, casting, and uh, it evolved out of a, a lapidary hobby. And I began to uh, be published in Lapidary Journal and a couple books. And actually had the first um, art jewelry website because we got into building websites way back in the, the early 90s. So I put up a site and I started making money right away from that. But uh, And then my... I, this eye got infected. It's my dominant eye. It isn't anymore. It got infected. It went blurry and I couldn't, I couldn't work on small, tiny little diamonds and jewelry and that kind of stuff. So that killed it off. And anyway, it's, it's a long story. I'm not going to go into it all, but I'll show you some of what I, what I, I've done in it. And uh, and this stuff, guitar pickups. So, okay, well, let's get going. Okay, so in the uh, previous comparison of the vintage ABR1 against the replica, um, there was one critical thing that um, I didn't take into consideration consideration and that the uh, replica I'll, sh I'll show that in, in a minute was precisely notched now take a look at the notch and this this is the same vintage ABR1 bridge and look at how big that notch is and how deep it is so we go to the next one same deal. It's, it's kind of it's just crudely done, and uh, this one's sitting high on on the on the saddle. This one has a notch that completely miss misses where it's supposed to be, and uh, so I set it on top of the saddle. Otherwise, it just buzzed like crazy. The next one over, it's a wide notch. It's So the string is sitting down deep and it's making more contact because of the, the shelf that it's sitting on is wider than the uh, replica notches. And then here's one where it's it's sitting too deep. It's contacting a lot of surface top that's down in the bottom of the notch. And, and the last one. 
Same deal. It's just this big wide notch string sitting way down deep across a wide piece of of the metal. So this episode we're going to completely fix that. So let's take a look at the uh, repli replica saddles and how I notch those. So here's the replica and how I precision notched these. This is the uh, low E and that notch is, is cut to the exact size of the string. Same thing here on the A string. D string, it's cut. Now, these are cut only to hold halfway up on the diameter of the string. So it's, the strings are effectively sitting almost directly on the top. It's the uh, G string, I think. This thing is heavy, it's hard to hold. And the E string. So, Come on, lock in. So the replica, the strings are sitting mostly on the top at a thinner uh, strip of the bridge saddle. So that's one reason why it possibly was sounding a lot brighter. So let's move on and take a look at what we're going to do. Ideally, we should have a brand new vintage ABR1, and we do. And you're looking at it. But it's not been notched. Right? So I have unnotched replica saddles for our replica I'm going to put both each of these bridges on my Les Paul and I'm not going to notch either one of them so the strings will be sitting directly on the top they'll be sitting on, on the saddle tops on both vintage and replica. So that should give us a pretty uh, perfect comparison between the two. So the notches are ruled out of the comparison. And we've got saddles that are pretty much identical. And then we'll hear if if there's a huge difference or or what so this this is probably what I should have done in the first place but you know I just didn't think about it so let's do it okay we've got the microphone rubber banded to the uh, lens and this is the the vintage new old stock mint and this is not the ideal way to play one of these bridges actually um, we're going to get some buzzing from the uh, strings not being totally anchored on the saddles, but it should be an interesting comparison. So here we go. 
Let's get it nice and close to the microphone. little bit of buzzing. Okay, this is the uh, replica with the uh, unnotched saddles. So let's see how this sounds compared to the vintage one with no notches in brand new condition. Same as the replica is the brand new condition. So here we go. Get my finger in there.
having trouble getting my baby finger to hold those two strings together on the top. It's a, it's a stretch and it's... So that's why it's... Getting a little out of tune there. Okay, a little bit of soloing in, uh, do it in G. So that's the uh, Replica Bridge Unnotched Saddles. Okay, so I had to put the uh, Vintage Unnotched Mint ABR1 back in because I forgot to do the solo thing with it. So here we go again. We're going to play a little solo bunch of junk in in D little bit of buzz in there because it's not notched
this is going to be interesting to hear this back again. I am an army brat. My dad was in the Signal Corps. We moved every year or every other year for 20 years. And uh, he always had a ham shack, soldering iron, and all kinds of electrical gear around. So that's in my blood. As a kid, I wanted to be a cartoonist, but by the time I was in my late teens and early 20s, it was too late. So I did a lot of drawing for fun. I did a lot of cartoons for my graphic design, um, advertising clients, did a lot of political cartoons during the last catastrophe. and. Uh, I think maybe that had something to do with me being censored off social media. But it was fun, and lately I don't really have time to do drawing anymore. Though I miss it, I'll probably get back to it eventually. And uh, it's in my blood, and it's my first love, this cartooning. So I'm going to give this a shot. This, this is my old portfolio when I was a graphic designer. And uh, it's huge, so it's kind of hard to photograph. But I, I thought I'd show you a little bit of what I was doing. This was a uh, concept for EMG. It's a EMG dual mode push-pull kind of switch or something. This is a... Uh, some cartooning of mine. These are some original uh, concepts for EMG when I hooked up with them early on. Some more concept designs. So these are all hand drawn. Another one completely hand-drawn to present an idea. Another one. A annual report. I did the art. Some more cartooning stuff I did. Cartooning was my first love. Did some, worked for a new age book company and did covers. It was fun. Oh, some airbrush art, airbrush cartooning. More book covers, more annual report art. A uh, doggy bone product. Another EMG concept. Another EMG concept. Some uh, wine label concepts. Lots of logos. I did all kinds of logos. Frank Gambali did his one of his uh, first. Um, cover art and the concept. Lots of uh, stationery for corporations and stuff like that. <laughs> it's hard to turn these pages. This was some fun stuff. I did a uh, all these wine labels for Pedrincelli in Sonoma County. Got some free wine out of that. More logos. 
more art for concept stuff. Some uh, this one was a uh, Sonoma County Fair concepts, or actually it got printed. Product label design. This was a big, big project for EMG, their catalog. That thing won awards, it was really good. Lots of great photography. Shrapnel Records. I did like a couple hundred album art packages for those guys. And, uh, oh, now my, it's all collapsing over here. this uh, EMG ads I did so many ads for those guys uh, Sonoma County visitors guide big ad for uh, EMG pickups another cool ad for EMG pickups uh, early uh, CD package design, a whole life expo. That, that's just a quick look. Cacophony. Uh, Boston Tea Party. A uh, Santana tribute. Album, more cacophony. Freeway Jam, that was a Beck, Jeff Beck tribute album. Some ugly art that I didn't do for Tony McAlpine. Uncle Mo's Space Ranch. And this was the last job I ever did in graphic design and it was for Leslie West and Mountain and I never did another album or any kind of graphic design after that I was just I just had, had stressed out had worked myself nearly to death got sick for a year and uh, that's when I quit and stuck to making pickups and uh, glad I did it's still very stressful but Leslie Leslie was a, a gem of a guy I mean dealing with him was like being on a Ozzy Osbourne show it was it was always a lot of drama but he was his heart was just pure gold he was and this, by the way, is this amazing album that's hardly got any attention. Ozzy Osbourne was a guest on it. And it was a, a Masters of War, Bob Dylan. They, they did a whole take on that. It was just wonderful album. So that was my graphic design career. Uh, shrapnel and EMG pickups were my two big bread and butter clients. I had EMG for about 12 years and shrapnel for 25 years, which is something of a record in graphic design. So, but I wanted to be a cartoonist when I was a kid and I did get some cartoons and all. Uh, I'll show you some of them here in the, uh, when I turn this thing off. So here's a few more uh, album cover designs I did for some pretty famous people. Lots of fun. Some of, some of my better work. And uh, also a few of my lapidary metal arts pieces just for the heck of it. Anyway, uh, 
thanks for uh, watching my reminiscing of other things I've done with my life so far. And see you next week for something else. Leave comments, ask questions, suggest topics. Till then, bye.